Mark Pope and the Kentucky Wildcats are pushing after North Florida transfer Chaz Lanier. What are the Wildcats' chances of landing this talented guard? We're going to have that conversation on today's episode of the Wildcats Today podcast. I'm your host, Andrew Stefaniak, writer and editor over at Wildcats Today, joined, as always, by my co-host, Carson Ash. Carson, not a ton of news this weekend. How was your weekend? What's going on? Yeah, it was a good weekend. You know, a pretty wild one. I uh, hope yeah. everyone out there enjoyed their Derby Day festivities and all the fun around the state. Yeah, we had a we had a fun weekend. We had a good time. We had a little Wildcats today hitting the thousand subscribers party, which the only people that we can really offer thanks to being able to have that party is y'all. So we appreciate. It. We had a great party, and yes. we only got to do it because y'all helped us get to a thousand subscribers. So we really appreciate it. And keep hitting that button if you haven't already, because we'll have to have a two thousand subscriber keg party and honestly i might we might have to have the keg party every 100 because that was a lot of fun <laughs> but let's get right into it carson Chaz lanier is a name that has been floating around a lot and he is an uber talented guard watched a lot of film on him another player that i'm excited about how do you feel chances wise what do you think about him as a fit what do you think about him as a player and another thing and we'll talk about this more on thursday we're going to, on Thursday's episode of the Wildcat Today Show, we're going to do a little, we're going to break down, hey, who's going to start? We're going to talk about roles and stuff like that for players that have already committed. But I think that conversations need to be had now, Carson, of like, okay, you land Lanier, a 20 points per game guy, is he going to want to come in? Like, is he going to start? So, I mean, we're not going to get deep into it because that's going to be Thursday's show, but give me your thoughts on all that. Yeah, so, uh, you know, at the beginning, when he first entered the transfer portal, um, I, I felt like he was just – he was going to Tennessee because he, he had a no-contact clause, which pretty much means um, that schools can't reach out to the player. And the player has to reach out to those schools. Basically, so that, like, say Ole Miss reaches out to Lanier. Like, he doesn't want to waste their time by even having that conversation because he wouldn't be interested. Um, so, really, I thought – um, I thought he was going to be a vol. Um, uh, but recently the steam has kind of picked up with Kentucky because uh it's taken a while for him to make a decision. So um really at, and apparently they, they had a meeting uh recently and it was a two and a half hour long meeting. Um so that can't be bad uh for our chances. And I, I really like this kid. Uh he's he's very, very athletic. And it kind of seems like he's he's the type of player we're missing on this team right now. You know, a, a go and get your own bucket type of guy. We have all the pieces around that. We have our, our role players that that know what they're they're coming in to do, but we don't have that uber talented athletic player like like a Chaz Lanier that can light up the scoreboard and go for thirty. So yeah. I really like him, and I feel like our chances are getting better every day. And another thing I like about him is he's a proven shooter. So I'll run through the numbers for you. 19.7 points per game last year for the Ospreys, which is a really awesome. Is that a bird? What do you think? Is that? It's got to be a bird. Yeah, yeah. I would assume it's a bird. I don't know, though. That's a bird. That's a bird. My mom would know. That's my mom. Um, 4.8 rebounds per game, 1.8 assists. He's a six foot a six foot four guy. So, you know, I don't he's he's a scoring guard. He's not really a, a dish it guard. Yeah, he's a, um, I think he's a combo guard. I, I don't think yeah, he's he a combo, but no, he's not your facilitator. Um, and he shot 51% from the field. One thing I'll say as a guard, you take that all the time. We talk about, didn't you know, like I always talk about Wade Taylor, the fourth is a great example. Of this he, pretty, he was an all SEC something selection this year, right? Didn't he shoot like 36% from the field? Like it was something yeah. just horrendous, like 51% from the field as a guard is really impressive really impressive. as a guard who is a high volume scorer, high volume shooter um it means hey he's efficient so and 44 percent from deep 88 percent from the free throw line this is i'd have to check on how many guess what he shot from the free throw line during the 22 23 season what a hundred percent i'd be no really way. curious to know how many attempts that's on yeah i might have to look that up in a minute but <laughs> 88% this season, um, which once again, that is going to get the job done and 44% from deep. But then you look at the numbers and you go, okay, 39% um, the season before. So he's a legit shooter. It's not a one-time thing. He's a shooter. 
And he played 19.6 minutes per game, shooting 100% of the free throw line. So that, that has to be on somewhat volume. That's that's We're going to have to look that up because that's got to be like a record of some kind. But those are the stats. I'm with you, Carson. I like this kid a lot. And I do think that at first, it didn't. I didn't feel great about our chances. I knew that we'd reach out. As soon as I saw this kid hit the portal, I saw his numbers. I watched tape. I go, yeah, Coach Pope's going to reach out to this guy. Um, but then – after a few, you know, I, it just it did, I didn't feel great about it, and then you're starting to see some steam. You're starting to, this is starting to, starting to pick up some steam here. So uh, this is not one that either of us are going to sit here and say it's a lock. It, it's not like that. But I do think the cats have a have a have a around 50 50 shot at this. You know, um, so to, a, 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 the problem here is I, would he start over you know some of the guys you've already got on the team. You know, um, Otega away or or a Kerr Creation. And I know that he's more of a of a two guard, but like, um, you know, you got Lamont Butler. Like you've already got some, like you've got some guards. Would I, th- I think you would because I think you can play him alongside Lamont Butler, and they would be a really good tandem. Yeah, but I'm just telling. It, it, and this will be Thursday's conversation. But I'm just saying, I think that's that's what's playing into his decision. Mark Pope does not seem like the type of coach that's going to say, "I am guaranteeing you this." I don't think he's just not that type of coach. And, you know, so he's telling them, hey, you know, there's a role for you here, but if you want it to be a starting role, you got to come here and earn that. And I think there are some schools, uh, legit schools, he could go to and just start right now. And -hmm. I think that's a good thing because, you know, listen, this Kentucky team is really building quite well. And, Carson, this will be another show. We might have to do this like Sunday or something, but I – I've seen just a lot of people, you know, on threes way too early, top 25, and the Cats aren't involved. Um, neither were the Hogs either. So, I mean, you know, and, and that's going to be a top 25 basketball team. So it's not it's not gospel. But at the same time, I'm just telling you, this basketball team is going to end up being a top 10. I mean, I'm sorry, a top 25 basketball team. It's going to be – this is a top – I would say it'll be in that like 18 to 25 range to start the season. So – If things go really right, I could see top 10 too. <laughs> I, I think I mean you'd have to land a, you know Lenny, two, of, have to two go of, of the players that we're going to talk about. Yeah, but what I'm saying is, I mean, you, you went and got a whole bunch of stars in the college game. I mean, yes, they all have to gel. There's a lot that has to happen. There's 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 X factors that have to work out. But this team can be really good, and the, and if you don't agree with that, I, I I just I don't see it how. And if you are someone. It, you know, listen, there are still the Mark Pope haters that we see in the, in, in that are Kentucky fans that I'm seeing in the comments. And it's like, hey, if that's well, let me, you. Let me throw you this out here. I mean, BYU was like a top 20 team all year last year, and we have way more talent than that team had. So, yeah. Uh, and I that mean, was just coaching. Yeah. So, I'm with you on that. But what I'm saying is, if y'all if, if y'all are listening and you're like, oh, this team's not going to be good, Coach Pope. Give us a, a reason why. I'd love to hear a why in the comments, like out of, genuinely out of curiosity, because um, I don't think we'll agree, but I'd like to hear your point of view on it. So that's Chaz Lanier. Once again, I would say 50. Well, Carson, would you say 50 50? Would you say higher or lower? Is 50 50 fair? Uh, as of right now, because normally when it kind of like the Kobe Bray situation, like when teams are kind of out of it and then they kind of make a late push, you normally see teams that are like that win up win with the recruit. Uh, it happened to UK a lot, all the time. We would get burned by that. Like we would be le- like, yeah. listen, like Zion and Paulo, we were the favorites for both of them. And then bam, here comes Duke like last week. And then they both mm-hmm. end up going to Duke. So um, I would put it more like a 60, 40 us right now, honestly, but again, recruiting is fluid. So that could flip tomorrow. So uh, you never honestly really yeah. know. Yeah, you're right about that. So another guy I want to talk about, not quite as long, but is 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 Wooga Poplar, the kid from Miami. We a big bull nation. We've seen him because he was here in Rupp Arena last year. Let me pull up his numbers in the year. I think he had 17 in that game. Um, if I remember right. And yeah, I, I, I don't. Remember, really I remember about. watching him be like, "Dang, this kid, this kid's pretty legit." And I'm pretty sure he was like had eight points in the first like 10 minutes of the game. Where you're like, "Man, who is this?" Yeah. Guy? Um. Averaged 13.1 points per contest this year, 4.8 rebounds, 2.1 assists, shot 42.6% from the field, 38.5% from deep, 86.4% from the free throw line. You know, a 6'5 guard, 197 pounds from Philadelphia, not afraid to help on the boards, you know, about five a game. Um, A kid I like a lot. I've seen a lot 
a lot of Kentucky fans kind of, eh, on this kid. Like, eh, we take him. What are your thoughts? Are, are you someone that's like, I'd take him as a role player? Are you someone that's like, or are you someone that's like, I really want this kid? Are you like, eh, I don't know. Like, what are your thoughts on Luka Poplar, Carson? This one's weird to me because I feel like in Pope's system, he could be really, really good. And I think he has a lot of upside because he's very athletic. He had one, a dunk in the UK game where I was like, oh, my goodness. Like, he yeah. he throws it down. So, I don't know. I, I wouldn't put him above Lanier in my wish, wish list or Robinson, for that matter. I would, I would favor Lanier and Robinson over him. But if you end up missing on both of those, then, I mean, I wouldn't definitely wouldn't be upset with him as your guy yeah. um because i do think he could flourish uh with pope as the the coach he's a great player he's a great player and and, and you gonna i mean so how many i got how many players are we even at right now i guess i mean we're at like i Amari, think yeah Carr, and the who else are we at? garrison butler otega away travis perry um Kirk Kreisha, Kobe mm-hmm. Bryce. Are we at eight? Is that right? Are we at eight? I think I somewhere around there. Let us know. I if believe we're eight. So, yeah, you need a couple. You're going to need you know more players. You need yeah. a few more guys. But are they all going to be legit dudes? Or are now, a couple going to be now? Legit? If you do this, where you get um, one of Robinson or Lanier, and then put them with Poplar, that would be a situation that I would really like. Yeah, I, I agree with you on that. And I like his game. I like his game. I guess what I would what, what I'm trying to my plan of saying it across is I would take those two names, Carson, that you just named over Wuga Poplar. Yeah. Me Not too. that he's he's a great player. I just if I had a wish list, he'd be number three of those three yeah. those three players. Um and, and I I I'd, if you swing and miss twice, I'd take him. If you go one for two and you still want to take him, I'd take him. Like no no doubt. Yeah. Um but that uh, that's my thoughts on, on Poplar. Carson, we have to talk a little bit about this little high school recruit action, but which is going to be a fun conversation. Any other thoughts on Wuga Poplar before we move on to this high school kid? No, that's that's pretty much it. Um, I like him. Uh, I definitely – I I would like to pair him with one of those two that we talked about, though. I think that yeah. would be probably best case scenario. Well, best case scenario is get both those two names listed. But if you don't, if you can only get one of those two, then pair him with Poplar and let's go. Yeah, I'm with you. So the next name, and this is a really interesting one, Trent Noah. You got the high school name, Carson? Yeah. I already forget what high school he went to. What high school? I think he went to – didn't he go to Harlan County? Yeah, Harlan County. Harlan County. So Harlan County kid, Trent Noah, had previously been committed to the South Carolina Gamecocks, but now he has been released from his um, NLI and – Open that back up his recruitment. I think that Coach Pope is going to be in on this one. He's a another Kentucky kid, great shooter. He was the second best player in the state of Kentucky behind only Travis Perry this year. So go get the two best players in your state. Bring them in, especially knowing that they both fit in well to what you're trying to do when it comes to shooting and spacing and stuff like that. And you so, said we only have eight players right now. I I'm taking Trent Noah in a heartbeat. Yeah, I need to count that. I believe it's it's either eight or nine or seven. Mm-hmm. No, it's definitely eight. We count it, it's eight or nine. But unless if I'm either forgetting one person or not. But yeah, go get. I mean, I love like what's Travis Perry's role going to be this year? I don't know. It might not. But Travis Perry's a kid that is going to. I mean, you get these two guys. They play. Well, let's play. They say they play eight minutes a game, right? Eight mm-hmm. minutes a game, and then next year they really explode and they play a lot. And I mean, let's be honest. This conversation that we're having right now was the same conversation we had about Reed Shepard last year. And I'm not saying either exactly. will be him, but no. if you take a chance and it works out well, you I mean, I, I like both both of these guys. Not every Kentucky kid is going to be Reed Shepard. We have to remember that. Not every Kentucky kid can be Reed Shepard. Um, and because we're, we're all going to do that to ourselves, we're all. And I honestly, like, I feel bad for Travis Perry coming in the, when he's coming in because, like, the expectations are going to be Reed Shepard. Um, and and I, I I don't know if I believe he'll be Reed. I mean, once again, Reed Shepard's gonna be a top ten pick in the NBA draft. This is he was one of the best players in college basketball. I don't know if Travis Perry's gonna be that, but I do think Travis Perry could be a really good college basketball player. I think he'd be that guy that you see on a on a TikTok in in six years that says forgotten college basketball March Madness stars because he like can't miss from three like that type of player. 
and those type of players, let them sit a little bit and develop. We we have been, I mean, just Kentucky fans since Coach Calipari's been here. When a freshman comes to your school, he is playing, and that is it. There, you know what I mean. That is it. He is playing because he's a five star. That is not how it always works everywhere. There's a lot of places that act, they, their freshmen sit and then they play down the road. You know, I mean, this this was a Calipari thing. So what I'm getting at here, what I'm, what I'm getting at here is go get Trent Noah. Go get, you know, you already got Travis Perry. Let him sit for a year. Let him develop into or, or, or play limited minutes for a year and develop into stars in college hoops. I mean, really. Trent, so Trent Noah, team, Travis Perry, and uh, Colin Chandler, I, I like that trio. Just yeah, ready to get better. Yeah, guys that are, are going to come in and develop. Because once again, I don't know what call we forgot. Colin Chandler. That's it. So was. I think that's nine. So I do think yep. it's nine. Um, so the point about him, about Colin Chandler, like another guy, I don't, I don't know what his role is going to be with what you've already done, with what you've done, you know, roster wise. I, he, he, to me, out of the three, has the highest upside for sure. Oh, he, de- oh, he definitely does. But it's also just like. What's the dude been doing? Like, I, I gotta see it a little bit. I gotta see it before I believe it. Knowing that oh, yeah. you know he's been doing stuff. Like, what's his training been like? Yeah, he, I mean, you know, like it's just, it's reality of it. So, um, so and then you got some numbers for Trent Noah from um yeah yeah yeah. So um, if anyone in the the chat or watching went to go watch him in the Sweet Sixteen, they'll know this. But his Sweet Sweet Sixteen numbers were. 35 points, 48 points, 29 points, and 17 points. He averaged 32.3 points per game and shot 55.9% from three. I think he'll take that any day of the week. I will live with that. I can relate to that. Last night at Wimes, yeah, I made four threes in one game. So that did happen. Ask Cameron. You can ask him. That we need occur. video evidence. All right, whatever. Just saying. So I can relate to those numbers, to be honest with you. But – um. No, kid's a great player. I mean, you know, I, I would love to have him see what happens. And then once again, my, a great example of, of two players like that were Jordan Burks and, and Joey Hart. Uh, Jordan Burks was obviously a much better player than Joey Hart was. But Coach Cowan like, Here's hey. the thing. Here's the difference. I'll say this too. I think the state of Kentucky does a really good job at developing young talent like high through high school because they mm-hmm. teach them all the fundamentals. Like I feel like Kentucky players are – born knowing how to play basketball. I don't know. There's something weird about it. Yeah, but, I mean, like that kid, the kid that went um, from – the kid that played at Henry Clay, I think, and then he was in Northern Kentucky, and he was awesome, and now he went yeah, somewhere. Yeah, Kai Kai Tandy, War- right? No, Warwick, I think was his name. Oh, Warwick. Warwick. There, there's another oh. – Kai Kai Tandy was from Kentucky, too. And Tavion Hollingsworth, he went to yeah. WKU. He was a stud. Yeah, he was great. But um, uh, yeah. I just think the state of Kentucky does well, and I think, like, I'm taking a Trent Noah over Jordan Burks just based on the fact that he – he can pass. He does it all, and he's got size. So, yeah, I don't know. I, I like him. I'm and I think, what I'm saying is, yeah, taking players like this. Now they're Kentucky, Kentucky boys. You want them to stick around, but if they don't work out and they hit the portal, we're, we're wishing them the best of luck. You know, I mm-hmm. mean, Joey Hart went to Ball State. Like, you know, I mean, this stuff happens. Like, if they want to go somewhere else, then we're all rooting for you. That's okay. But come here and let's see what happens. You could they could develop into stars. We don't know. So mm-hmm. get them and see what happens. You have the scholarships. So yeah, and I'll put this out there too. I feel like yeah. if you look back on all of our championships, a uh, Kentucky-born player has made a huge impact on most of those teams. So it's always nice to have in-state talent because I feel like they it's it's different to them, you know. Mm. Yeah, I'm with you. Any other thoughts, Carson? Before we call it a day. Nope, that's all I got. Yeah, um, I say help us get to 2,000 subscribers so we can have another uh, weekend keg party with all of our friends. That'd be awesome. Um, yeah, next time we'll film Andrew on the slip and slide. I, I was on the slip and slide. It was kind of fun. You know, who said to buy the slip and slide and who didn't get on it? Oh, <laughs> well, don't, don't rep arena dunk cam this out. I, run, I just rep arena dunk cam. That, that just, we're going to get the snack words cam going next. Um, yeah, but once again, hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. Really, we do appreciate that so much. Hope everybody had a great Derby weekend. Hope everybody bet on Mystic Dan like Reed Shepard predicted. Um, I did not. I had Sierra Leone, and he lost by that I much. Had forever was, Young, and he lost by that much. Yeah, so we, we, we were both right there. Yeah. So, hope everybody has a great rest of their week, and we will see you all on Thursday to break down 
hey, roster management, who's going to start, what's or what's roles, and we'll, we'll talk about that on Thursday. Everybody have a great rest of your day today, and we will see you on Thursday.